Good morning. Today, we're gonna take a look at a relay. You wanna know how to wire it? I'll show you. I might also show you how it works. Let me get this set up and we'll go from there. All right, so right now we're looking at the prong side of a standard 12 volt, 30 amp Bosch style relay. This particular one has five prongs, some have four prongs. Let me show you what those prongs do. All right, here's the, here's the five prongs. We have 85, 86, 87, 87A, and 30. What do they do? Let me show you. So right here we have 85 and 86. This is simulating a coil. When these two get power and ground, they create an electromagnetic charge, which flips this switch from 85 to 87. Let me show you on one I've taken apart. All right, this is 85, or sorry, this is 86, this is 85. Flip it over, there's the coil I'm talking about. When they get power, this essentially is gonna become an electromagnet. It's gonna make this tiny little switch over here move over there. Let me show you. All right, so now I'm gonna put power on one side, ground on the other. It doesn't matter which side you use for which, it makes no difference whatsoever. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but let's see. If you watch this spot right here, you're gonna see this little reed switch. Let's see if you can see that. So what that is doing is making it switch from 87A to 87. So if we grab this relay here, so on this relay, this is 87, this is 87A, and this is 30. Right now, if I between meter between 30 and 87A, they are connected. If I connect between 30 and 87, there's nothing. Now if I charge the coil using power and ground, test with my meter again, you can see that 87A no longer is connected, but 87 is. So say I want to hook up some fog lights, or maybe I'm just hooking up a remote turn on because I'm running more than two amps off a turn on circuit. So I'm going to ground to this side or the other side makes really no difference whatsoever. I want to feed power to my lights or to my multiple amps. This test light's gonna simulate either the output for the remote turn on or your fog light or whatever. So say this is my trigger, whether it be a switch or a remote turn on, lots of uses we can use for this. This test light will light up as soon as I supply power. But instead of getting whatever the minimal amperage this trigger would have, I can pull up to 30 amps through this relay to run whatever I need to, whether it be to motorize a drawer, a set of fog lights, turn on multiple amps, whatever. There's tons of options we can use this for. So let's go back to the chart here. Just to clarify, 86, 85 are tied together between a coil to create an electromagnetic charge, if you will, to switch a switch to allow current to go from 30 to 87, but at rest, it will be 30 and 87A. Now, if you have a four pin harness or four prong harness and this one doesn't exist, it just means 30 doesn't rest against anything, but you still can use it for fog lights, turn ons, whatever. There's a lot of uses you can use this for. So once again, 86, 85, tie together through coil. So 86 and 85 are the ones that charge the coil. 
One side will need to be power, one side will be need to be ground. It doesn't matter which one is which, and it doesn't matter which one is the switch. If you need to use a negative trigger to charge a relay, just make sure that's positive. If you need a positive trigger to charge the relay, just make sure the other one's negative. 30 and 87 and A are tied together when there is no charge to the coil. As soon as you apply a charge to the coil, that's when 30 will now link to 87 and 87A will be isolated. So a simple drawing. Like I said before, it doesn't matter which one's which, but I'll use this for a, a reference chart. So if you want to do fog lights, whatever, anything that's a simple trigger over, this is a simple diagram on how to do it. We're going to connect 85 to ground. 86 is going to go to my 12 volt switch. 30 or 87 can go to whatever your out your input needs to be. And 87 could be your output. It's that simple. So that's the basics on how a relay works. If you want to learn more about other uses for relays, more advanced uses using multiple relays, hit that subscribe button so you can learn some more. And always, have a great day, guys.